Hello everyone, welcome to Fiora. Today we are reviewing the T-62 Veteran, the free tank we get for Veterans Day from, our, from Obsidian. Now, the camo scheme is snazzy. The inscriptions are kind of nice. I mean, this is what we have to look forward to somewhat for our ability to paint and play with these tanks. So as you can see right now, it's camo's kind of turned off and decals are about the all we can do. Anyway, let's put some pumpkins on this thing. So, what can we say about this tank? Well, it's a T-62. Pure and simple. There is no discernible difference between the two vehicles. I can even show you this. T-62 Vet, T-62. It's the same tank. Verbatim! Save for my other version of the T-62 doesn't have the Mark II reinforcement. It only has the Mark I reinforcement. It's the same tank. Same model, same everything. Now, the only two complaints I have about this vehicle. One, it does not count as a premium tank. Two, we have to actually research upgrades. So, here's the deal, Obsidian. From now on in the future, if you're going to make if you're going to release tanks like this, at least assign them to either to a dealer so that we're getting XP towards the dealer. Otherwise, please give us the tank fully upgraded. one or the other. I mean that would be nice. Now I understand not making it a premium tank because that's how you guys make bank. Fair enough. But it's not really acceptable for us to grind out XP and then not be able to convert said XP and on top of that for it not to count towards either of our dealers. So in the meantime we're actually going to compare it to its cousins. Now these three vehicles are fully upgraded and all equipped with the same tank commander in my garage. Let's take a look at it versus the Leopard 1. So against the Leopard 1 you have higher alpha damage, slightly lower penetration, slightly lower damage per minute. Something to take into account. The Leopard 1 will reload faster than you. And that is his advantage. That is what he needs to take advantage of. However, you have something the Leopard doesn't armor. A lot of it and you can really take advantage of the fact you have a shit ton of armor 242 on the turret with the sloping comes out to something obscene for armor capabilities whenever you're shot at by equal tier tanks or lower tier tanks the hull however yeah you need to cover that up as much as possible don't rely on the hull to bounce shots rely on the turret hit points wise the leopard wins out but you have to remember you're going to poke less because you have a longer reload and because you do more damage per shot particularly with your heat shell that can roll up to 500 camouflage wise you're actually harder to see but your vision is so much shorter than the leopard one the leopard one's vision is AFV levels so you will be outspotted by the leopard one but if you're not moving and behind a bush you might be able to sneak up on it your traverse speed on this tank is really good. The turret and hull traverse are amazing compared to the other MBT counterparts. But your overall top speed is not. You're a little slower and your accuracy is not great compared. Well, it's good, but it's not awesome compared to the other two MBTs and we're going to get into why. So, yeah, you aim slower, you take longer to load, you're not as accurate, and you don't have the depression. What do you have? You have turret armor. Make sure you take advantage of that turret armor. Now let's compare it to the M60. M60 wise, I mean hands down, you win alpha you win alpha and damage per minute contests. You also have more turret armor. Your turret is more reliable at bouncing shots as well. Both from the front and side. Your hull Here's what I have to say about this. Your hull technically has better sloping. However, your hull technically also has less armor. So it kind of works out where the Patton has better hull armor and better all around armor. 
but your turret is pretty indestructible. Camouflage-wise and vision-wise, well, you match the pattern, and you are completely invisible compared to the pattern. You will he, you will spot him first. You also have you're also faster, more maneuverable, and your traverse speeds are better both for hull and turret, flat out. The difference here is the Patton will fire his second shot before you do. Always remember this in the Soviet and Russian style MBTs. You will have to wait you will have to back up and take cover. You cannot sit in an open brawl because you will always have less HP and you will always fire slower. Your shots will do more damage, and you need to figure out ways to take advantage of the higher alpha. Now, that said, you have the worst gun depression out of all the Tier 3 MBTs, period, end of story, and it's the same with the regular 62. Um, and you have the worst accuracy. However, the patent has a longer aim time. You can take advantage of that. If you're making the patent have to move, he's likely to miss his shot. So keep that in mind. So now that I've said all this, and we've gone over it, we're going to take a look at the armor diagram real quick. You can see, armor's not bad. Commander-wise, I recommend Victor or Freya. I don't have Freya unlocked yet, but I know her from the early access, and I would recommend her. Or Victor. Retrofit, I advise the hull reinforcement and the chrome barrel lining to make up for your accuracy and to increase the already massive amount of damage you do and to give you enough hit points to be able to survive the battle longer. I recommend this, the consumable standard consumable loadout. For those who are wondering where Freya is, she's actually on the M109 here. I'll show you guys in the upgrade screen. This is who you this is the other good option for main battle tank commanders, but you have to go through the artillery to get it. So bear that in mind. In the meantime, uh, let's go take a look at some gameplay of the T-62 veteran, shall we? This game plan and, um, I guess. So, and I actually did this with um, with my league team. So that's Babseed and Lisker Wolf, um, for some reason, like, who are really members of Cynics.Bot. And we are testing stuff out. Now, Lisker pulled a bonehead and accidentally exited the garage and had no way to get back in. Lisker, you bonehead. Watching you. Also have a potato, though. And right now, this tank is yeah, bone stock except the retrofit. I don't have the chrome barrel lining equipped. Don't have it unlocked yet. This is literally my first battle in this tank. Now, to illustrate this to you guys, the T62 is a solid vehicle. It's not bad. It. Its gun's kind of good. But you really have to know how to take advantage of it because you don't have a lot of gun depression. And that's kind of going to show in this replay, where I'm constantly fighting my gun depth. And there's not a lot I can really do about that. Poor traffic signs. What did they ever do to me? Because it's also the... Oh, no. Now, as I move up here, I know full well that I'm stock. Oh, my options are no. HE or Sabo. And I actually have my Ooh, ammunition I count under-equipped because I didn't want to pay for extra back, ammunition because as soon as I get the heat rounds, guess what? All that extra ammunition space is going to be heat rounds. And you will abuse the heat shells in this thing. You can pin other T-62s with no, your heat shells. Abuse. Once you get the heat shell, abuse it. You will love it, especially against anything that isn't a main battle tank. Oh my god. You try and PvP coming up and hitting one of these XM800s for 500 plus. They will rage. A critical hit actually can kill them. Like, just flat out one shot somebody if you critical hit with a heat shell on a low tier AFV or a light tank. Now, I am being cautious and playing this very carefully. Because I understand that rushing up and just, you know, going into battle might be bad for my health. Alright, so we're going to pull back here, and I thought I could shoot through the guardhouse here, I will admit. Turns out you can't. But it also turns out that the bulldog's gun is not powerful enough just to punch my hull plating. And we are having some difficulty with the leopard. So I pull back. Look for a shot on the Patton, don't really have it. Hello XM, how are you? 
Yeah, you don't want to do that. I will wreck your day. I should be firing high explosive. You know, because these things don't have yeah. a lot of armor. Bulldog thinks he's safe. He's not really safe. Damaged ammo rack is tasty ammo rack. I'll be, I'll be, that's why you saw me run into that box. I get set up for another shot. I can't point to the Wait for it and then move in. I recognize the threat of the T92 and I have to snap this one, but it does impact properly. For some odd reason, RNG decided that that actually hit. I'm not arguing. Babseed is telling me, by the way, he's getting torn up by this thing, and I'm trying my best. Oh, but there's not a lot I can do about it. I'm sorry for the voices in the background. I, I can't really eliminate them from the recording that without eliminating some game me. sound. And I'm sure you guys would actually appreciate hearing our team speak comms. This patent thinks the I can't shoot him through the wall. Totally can. All day long. The front of this tank's armor is spaced, by the way, so the Patton's capped HE penetrator shell does not cause I damage. Away, now, I am going to pay for this, but we're going to come around here and kill this bulldog. Uh, this uh, dragoon kept hitting me. I didn't, couldn't hang well enough. Because I don't have heat, so I can't. And so the Patton off to my left is a beautiful. And I decide I'm going to push it on through. Ow. I take aim. Catch him right in the commander's hatch, and I'm trying to get out of here now because the patent is just beating on me, and that hurts, and nobody's helping me. My my friendly patent has left instead of helping me fight these two MBTs. XM, I've already taught you once. I'm going to teach you again. Don't screw with me. I will kill you. Uh, now to get turned around. I'm gonna try to go save my southern allies because they're getting just beat up. And as I start to head this way, I realize, oh crap, I'm actually vulnerable to shots from the rear right now. This is not a good position. But our team is not actually holding very well. They're kind of slowly falling apart, especially with the three AFVs camped in the back who aren't really contributing. They're just kind of camping. Now, I get up into this position in order to fight this other 62 veteran over there, and then think that shot, if that had hit, saying, he'd been dead, so and that might have turned the outcome enemy. of this battle. And then I notice the Leopard 1 poking up here, and nope, he's going to pay for that, and I'm not. Now, the advantage here is I know that he takes six seconds to reload, and I only had four to reload at the time when he fired, so he's dead. Second kill. I notice I'm trying to shoot that 62 and I notice the other one over here. I kind of poke up to put his head down. He does duck. Ah, this is not a good position anymore. I need to get out of here. I try for the commander's hatch. Doesn't happen. My engine's out from the Dragoon. And now I'm reversing out of here trying to get to safety. And it's just not. I should have reversed off to the left and got behind that pillar. The enemy 62 bounces me. I'm still reversing out when... There it is. Nobody's spotting that. No. AFVs hiding in the back, guys. You can't do that with AFVs. Please stop. Actually scout for us. It's nice if we have eyes. And this 430, I don't know what he did all match. But he's still at full health. See, there he is again. He doesn't look like he's engaged in anything, by the way. And he's just... Driving along. Singing a song. I don't know. Is he aware there's a battle? He takes a shot to try to get a kill here. And fails and then pays for everything. And now that LAV-15090 is about to score his base tanker. I.e. the equivalent of Armored Warfare's top gun. Yeah, that's it. We're dead. I did do 21 21 damage, which is nearly twice my hit points in damage, and I was only penetrated by AP shells. So, there you have it. Um, it is a solid vehicle. If you play it correctly, it can turn out really well for you. Um, I do admit I probably made a mistake or two playing it this time. But I figured I would take it out and make sure I did it stock for you guys. 
And since it was in my garage and all the commanders have the same tank commander, you know they're all solid. I did get the iron uh, tanker award, which is the highest yep. reputation for the losing team. Because, you know, I wrecked people. Only two of my shots didn't actually do anything, and those were those two shots of that 62. <sighs> but yeah, that's it. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I hope to see you guys in the next video. If you did enjoy, please hit the like and share button. If you would like to support the channel, you can do so through um, Patreon for... I asked for a dollar, that's it. You can give more if you so choose, but entirely up to you guys. If you want to... Or you can click on the ad at the end of the video. Either one of those things support the channel. Here's the previous Armored Warfare video for you guys to go check out. And if you want to see more stuff, please subscribe. In the meantime, this is Fiora signing off for right now. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye, guys. Now, something to remember about this vehicle is it has no armor. Because it was made to be dropped out of airplanes. This is a paratrooper infantry fighting vehicle. They made this thing to drop it out of a plane or out of a helicopter. Um, its armor is, however, military aluminum. So, you know, that was changed over from the magnesium armor they used on the BMV-1 because of the BMV-1. The armor would catch fire. The armor would catch fire. Whoops. So, yeah, we're going to replace that with something else that's not going to burn as easily. Um, it was used during the, Af the Soviet-Afghan War and the Russian-Georgian War. In addition to this, it was used in the recent Ukrainian conflict by both 